Hello. Testing here. At the Western Region, T20 here in Oman. in Muscat waiting to get going in game three Talk like this. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, and you're welcome to the third game of this Western Region Asian Cricket Council Men's. Asia Cup qualifier here, and you're just joining us as we come back to the gorgeous surroundings of the Al Amarit Cricket Ground. And if you're just joining us, you've seen in your pictures in front of you there, Bilal Khan take his second wicket in two overs. And he's done it by knocking over Safraz Ali, who had taken quite the liking to Kali Mullah from the far end. This old man's side dealt a double blow ahead of the first game of the tournament because Aki Bilyas, their star batsman who's been in such terrific form, they lost him to a fractured finger during practice and Aki's been replaced by young Wazim Ali. And Bilal Khan, the left arm seamer, is in fine form to say the least. So Bahrain ranked significantly lower, remember, than Oman. Oman would be the favourites really coming into this, particularly on their home soil here in Muscat. Oman ranked 17th in the world in T20 cricket. Remember, though, they qualified for the T20 World Cup later in the year. And with, oh, juggled and taken. He thought just for a moment that he was gonna put it down, but after a little juggle of extra cover, to make out who that is, I think it might be Kaur Ali. You might have just missed that on your screens there as we're having a few challenges with the cameras. He was chipped straight to him at extra cover. And after a juggling catch, he's held on. So early troubles for Bahrain here in the third game. There's a little bit of confusion between the umpires and the players is that that's been given not out. And the reason that's been given not out is the umpire reckons that he put it down on the second attempt.
So our apologies for the ongoing technical issues. You can just see the black screen in front of you at the moment. So I'll continue to give you updates here as I can. At the moment, there are three overs gone. It's 20 for two, Bahrain. Just continuing to have a few little technical gremlins, which we are gonna tidy up for you as soon as we can. Team working away on it here in the background. So 20 for two, the score. Bilal Khan, the man in form, continues to be dominant with his left arm seam. Body's in good shape as well. A lot of cricket at the moment, a man. Of course, remember, back-to-back tri-series for them. Such a successful one, though. In Nepal, winning all four matches in Cricket World Cup League Two. See a first change of bowling. Callie Muller has been whipped out of the attack, replaced by the 37 year old Mohammed Nadim. Track can't make any contact. Mohamed Nadim at a superb tournament. Poor old man, probably arguably the player of the tournament, with the exception of Aki Bilyas. But Aki Bilyas, what a blow it is to lose him. 27 year old, back to back, one day international centuries after making 72 in the second game. Four games. And they'll be looking to. winning streak of forms are in, albeit in a different format here. And against a much lower ranked Bahrain, but remember just two sides will qualify from the eight here. That are duking it out in this Western region, T20 qualifier. And this group, possibly the more difficult of the two. We saw a really impressive performance from Qatar earlier on. Qatar will be putting it up to their Middle Eastern neighbours in the shape of Oman. Yeah, good pace from Ahmed Adim. He's sharp. We saw him surprise a lot of batsmen in Kathmandu as well. Just proving a little bit too quick. on that occasion. So eight teams are here. Bahrain, the second, second lowest ranked of those that do have a ranking. Of course, Iran making their T20i debut today. Historic day for cricket in the Islamic, public, Islamic Republic of Oman, but Bahrain ranked 52nd in the world, ahead of just the Maldives in this competition. And right on top, the home side. Just a small crowd starting to filter in. It's of course a Sunday, a work day here, the first day of the working week in Muscat. And the wind just getting up, giving a pleasant cooling effect across the ground. twos at the moment, 22 for two in the second over. Well, two overs gone, the third over of the match. Sorry, 22 for two in the 
fourth over. Three overs gone. Alan Nadim immediately replacing Callie Muller. After Callie Muller was dispatched for that almighty six, the second over of the game. Worked into the leg side, really good stop. Short fine leg. So that's going to close out the fourth over. Bahrain, 22 for two. So we're going to see spin for the first time today. Bilal Khan taken out of the attack, perhaps a little surprisingly. After taking two wickets, and it's going to be Wazim Ali. And remember, he's only in the squad because of that injury to Aki Bilyas. Wasim Ali, who made his T20i debut last year against Scotland. He just played the one T20i so far. On his left arm orthodox. Something of a rarity in Oman cricket, a bit of a youngster. So known of late for their. For their experienced cricketers, but. The wind just blows across us there. We get some collateral damage across the equipment, but no, too much harm done. So Wazi Mali it is with his left arm spin. See spin being utilised in the power play by Oman here. Sweep shot. That's really good batting. That's going to be a boundary. He's got it behind square on the leg side. Two men outside the rope, of course, in this first power play. And deep mid wicket. That's Cali Muller. It's gone far enough to his right to avoid him. The other fielder outside the circle is out at long on. So good use of the angles, good manipulation of the field. From Shabazz Badr. Turn that off. that batter is not doing particularly well is rotating the strike. We saw Qatar's batsmen do that so well this morning. Taking boundaries off the bad balls and off the good balls, taking the single. But Bahrain just struggling to follow that up. Could be half a chance with a direct hit. Bilal Khan doing the fielding, but they'll get through for the single. It's going to be signaled leg boys thudding into the pad. So Junaid Aziz will remain yet to get off the mark and yet to score his first T20 international runs. Five overs gone, quarter of the Bahrain innings is done. It's 27 for two. Going to be Mohammed Adim to continue from the Muscat end of the ground. Really is the most perfect day for cricket here. 
surrounded by the beautiful Gulf of Oman. And it's a stunning scene. Perfect temperatures, 24, 25 degrees. Just really nice in the shade where we are. Probably a little bit hot even out in the middle. But Mohammed Nadim will be looking to continue his really good form with the ball for Oman. And he finds the outside edge down to Bilal Khan who feels well in front of me. It's going to be a single. Nadim really surprised that USA and Nepal batsmen throughout the Tri-Series there in Kathmandu. He's skiddy and he's quick. He's just a little bit quicker than you'd think. But Mama Nadim is an all-round cricketer. that hard length but that one's steered to the right of Bilal Khan and the great cheers you hear behind my voice in the commentary of the Bahrain bench to my right they're delighted with that and the reason they're delighted with that it's the first T20i runs for Junaid Aziz he's on debut today one of four debutants in this Bahrain side Apologies for the pictures just intermittently jumping in and out. Let's get that fixed for you. But first T20i runs for Junaid Aziz. He really does hit the bat hard, Nadim. Comes in, old fashioned skiddy, fast, medium bowler. Junaid Aziz will feel a lot better having got off the mark on debut. Three balls remain now in the power play. We'll just continue to work on these technical problems, get those pictures back for you as soon as we can. Comes down the track this time. Junaid Aziz showing some aggressive intent. It's nice to see from the Bahrain side as well, something you don't see much in international teams these days. All of their Playing squad numbered 1 to 16 on the shirt back. None of these fancy high numbers, 69 or 99. Just 1 to 16 in this 14 man squad. Perhaps it was by the number that they made their T20i debut as well. So a nice touch from the Bahrain side. They're certainly the underdogs coming in to play against the much higher ranked Oman. He finds the Yorker, he'll get through for the single. Even with a direct hit, he would have safely been home. So that's gonna close out. In fact, we'll just have one more ball to come in the power play. Bahrain moved to 33. Remember, we have eight teams here this week playing out for two places in the next stage of the Asia Cup qualifier. Two sides will progress from this western region to join two sides from the eastern region which is being played next week. The likes of Malaysia, Hong Kong, Nepal, Singapore will be battling it out for those two spots. So really competitive stuff in this Asia region. Or should I say both the western and eastern region. Bit of a misfield at backward point from Amir Kaleem. Very unlike him. And that will end the power play. So six overs gone. It's 34 for two.
So this is one of two games ongoing right now. The other game across on the second oval. Barney Reed is covering for Saudi Arabia off to a bit of a flyer, but they've just lost two wickets in the power play. So 52 for three after six. Good game of cricket in store over there. But here at the main oval, it's the home side on top. Mix up, direct hit's gonna be out. And even without the direct hit, he's gonna be given. Real mix up, and he stands and stares with disgust. Junaid Aziz has been run out on T20i debut. A complete mix up between him and Shabazz Badr. Just played into the offside. I'm gonna try and bring you the replay of that now. No, we can't bring you the replay of that. So the throw came in from backward point. And sure enough, the batsman was well short. Real disgust. Partner shown to partner. So the third wicket falls in the seventh over. These team sheets fly all around us here in the commentary box. Apologies for that. Spoon at number five. For Bahrain is gonna be Imran Masood Bud, another one on Another man who's on his T20i debut. Four debutants, remember, in this Bahrain side. Just of a dead ball there is the batsman not quite ready. man bowling at the moment still looking for a first ever T20i wicket Wazim Ali just 21 years of age youngest man in the squad cut away straight to backward point where it's really well fielded for Sandeep Good that was a man who affected the run out just moments ago Side rocked by the absence of Aki Vilyas and Zishan Maksud, but they're mainly going to be missed in the batting department, although Zishan Maksud's left arm spin will be missed as well. That's why Wazim Ali is into the squad today. We should see Zishan Maksud later in the week, but we won't see, see Aki Vilyas. Aki Vilyas with that fractured finger. Nicely played, a deft touch down the leg side, and surely that one's gonna have the pace to run all the way away to the rope, it will. Tika Tika, the shape from the sideline as Shabazz Badar continues to impress with the bat. That's gonna close out the seventh over. Bahrain are 38 for three.
change in bowling and it's one of my favorite bowlers going around the associate circuit camera rally with his leg breaks surprisingly he struggled a bit with his bowling in nepal you would have felt the surfaces and the conditions would have really suited him oh, he nearly starts with a wicket lovely flight and a bit of drift he's coming off the inside edge we're gonna get an overthrow rather ridiculous piece of cricket jatinder singh tried to throw it in to suraj kumar but the keeper didn't lay a glove on it it was well to his right and Kamar ali had already turned his back thinking it was a drop ball but they'll get through for the single in some rather unconventional circumstances Rally, a really traditional leg spinner, gives a good flight, gets a good turn. A little bit quicker through the air this time, hit back towards Carrally. Can't affect the stop, so it'll just be a single. Remember, of course, Bahrain much less experienced. And this Oman side, they've only played four T20 internationals so far, winning two and losing two. Their two wins coming against the Maldives and Saudi Arabia. And their two losses coming to Kuwait and Qatar. So disuseful in their international career, Bahrain. Beauty, that's the googly I was talking about from Carol Ali's bowled him, and he's cleaned them all ends up. One of the best deliveries we've seen so far today. And that's why I love Kerr Ali. He's a magician with the ball in hand. Right through the gate. And just proving a little bit too good for Shabazz. I'll bring you the replay of this now. I'll try to bring you the replay of it. Ran Masood, but it was that was absolutely cleaned up. Big gap between bat and pad, hits the top of off stump. Here's the replay now. You can see a classic leg spinner's dismissal. The googly out of the back of the hand, a little bit more flighted through the air. Masood, but played for the leg break, and all it did was chop him in half. Beautiful bowling, Kerr Ali. The delivery of the day so far for me. Number six now for Bahrain is Fayaz Ahmed. Big right handed batsman, stocky man. Manager was telling me earlier it's a big hitter down the order. I'm just watching the replay of that leg or that googly once more on my screen. An absolute beauty from Kerr Ali. We were lucky enough to be here with Crick Clubs in October for the Pentangular Series and Carol Ali weaved his magic to roll out a T20i hat-trick. No such luck so far today for him, but he's got one wicket and just two runs coming from his first over. At the end of eight, Bahrain are 40 for four. shape from the sidelines comes out partnership partnership we're gonna have a change in bowling though and that change in bowling we'll see one of the most experienced cricketers come back into the squad he wasn't in the ODI squad perhaps surprisingly in the 50 over format not, not playing much in the ODI format these days more of a t20 specialist now in the latter stage of his career Amir Kaleem. It's been a very effective left arm spinner. Slightly over pitched to start and just worked nicely into the leg side. And because Bilal Khan's left handed, they'll have to run around it, allowing the batsman to get back for two. Such a strong bowling lineup, this Oman side. Good 
tight stuff from Amir Kaleem. He really is into the veteran stages of his career now. Thirty-eight years of age, born in Pakistan, of course. He's twenty-six T twenty I today. Another one we were lucky enough to be commentating on was that magnificent spell of five for fifteen. Looking to beat T twenty I best. That one strained down the leg side. It's going to be signalled wide, just losing his line a touch. Man's rise in world cricket has been absolutely brilliant. He's worked right the way through the divisions. Really, there's such depth in not just associate cricket at the moment, but in particular Asian cricket. Think about the fact that just four sides will be playing it out for one place in the Asia Cup later in the year. We heard from the Qatar manager earlier, they've got their sights on making sure that they upset the two fancied teams, the two highest ranked teams in hosts Oman and the UAE. So we could have some surprises this week. Oman with their injury problems. UAE with a new young side and they're gonna have to deal with the likes of Qatar and Kuwait and Saudi Arabia who are on the rise. cut away into the deep will just be a single so Bahrain just trying to rebuild remember good batting surfaces here and Muscat at the end of the ninth over it's exactly five and over the score is 45 for four so after the few gremlins that we had to Start out the innings. Let's take a look at the two playing 11s. So that's the Bahrain 12, in fact. Four men on T20i debut. That's Junaid Aziz, Imran Butt, Safiya Ivara Kathiran, and Abdul Majid Malik, who I was told is a player to watch. And what about the home side? Shorn of two of their star men. That's their 12 for today. Three missing out, Sufyan Mahmood, Karam Khan, and Zishan Maksud, who's back in Pakistan with the untimely and sad death of both his grandfather and grandmother. We miss Zishan well, he's in our thoughts, but I believe he'll be back soon enough. They're gonna run two here. Really good running. There's a good weight on that clip into the leg side from Fayaz Ahmed. That one's hit into the offside. It's a glorious shot. Inside out. Perhaps feeling the exertions of their last two. They don't get back for two this time. This one worked into the leg side. Good batting now, starting to rotate the strike finally, Bahrain. an appeal just coming from Tower Alley such a beautiful bowler to watch a real craftsman it really, was, really was a surprise he didn't go better in Nepal with the ball flight it again beautifully bowled but well dealt with through the offside this time so 
Well, Keller Alley is taking one wicket in his four ODIs. What can Catman do? Before that, in the T20 format, we saw him so prolific, firstly in the pentangular, and then. And he's got another. He just keeps doing what he does in T20 cricket, Kaur Ali, and that's taking wickets. The leading edge just pops back to his left, and he takes a full length diving catch. A good catch it was as well. Really beautiful bowling from Kaur Ali. And that is going to be the end of Shabazz Badr. Take a look at the replay. Slower through the air, and that's where he's so clever, in his, particularly in his home conditions. Saw him good in the T20 World Cup qualifier as well in the UAE. The leading edge, full length to his left. That's a really good catch. First class from Kaur Ali. And that brings us to the halfway stage. Bahrain, 50 for five. to the crease who's at the non-strikers end will just come on to strike now is Ahmed Udin number seven on his back Bahrain certainly behind the eight ball at the moment looking to try and get some momentum into their innings haven't been able to find any momentum really yet Score update from the other ground, Saudi Arabia, 70 for four in the 10th over against Kuwait. That game definitely evenly poised at the moment, but with the quality that's put down, Kaur Ali going to his left. He's just taken a really good catch. He's arguably put down a slightly easier one. He was hit aerially by Ahmed Udin and Kaur Ali couldn't hold on. Big appeal given. Amir Kaleem was absolutely certain. He reckoned it was pad first and the umpires agreed with him. So wickets falling in back to back overs. Bahrain and he starts to slide further now. Very full Amir Kaleem. Batsman coming across his stumps, hits the back pad right in front of the middle. Easy decision for me, that's out. Batsman is really on the move all over the place. And Ahmad Udin's stay at the crease is a short one. He's gone for two off three balls. Got to bring the captain to the crease. That's Anasim Khan. really starting to get up here now blowing across the ground from the east to the west nice cooling breeze for the players and for us here in the commentary box Bahrain's struggles with the back continue Good batting from the captain gets off the mark right away. He's gonna have to try and rebuild this innings. Cut away, gonna be a dot ball. Good tight stuff from Amir Kaleem. His first wicket comes. 
cost of just nine runs in his two overs so far. Bahrain, 54 for six after 11. at the moment. Carali's going to continue with his leg breaks. Beautifully bowled. You can almost see it with Carali as soon as he gets it coming out of the hand nicely before the ball's even pitched. You know he's on the money. be a single protection on the offside yeah you'd have to think oh man certainly the favorites coming into this tournament on their home soil a side in a rich vein of form just get into a winning habit and no matter what happens they continuing to win doesn't matter who they seem to be playing against this time hit down the ground down the ground pleasingly Bahrain need to rebuild though try and get up to 120 maybe 130 give their bowlers something to work with remember this is an Oman side shorn of two of their star batsmen that one's hit into the leg side. It's going to be a boundary, the first boundary of Kara Rally. Fayaz just starting to find a little bit of touch pulled into the deep, wide of the man at fine leg. Kaleem's going to continue and he's bowled him. Amir Kaleem is a man in red hot form in T20i cricket. Flat through the air, these two spinners working so well together in tandem. Karali slow and drift and tempting through the air. Amir Kaleem nothing to work with. Flat angling in for Fayez Ahmed. In fact, it's the skipper. Fayez Ahmed on strike. Amir Kaleem has always operated that if you miss, I'll hit. Whether it's LBW or bold, which of the two A's he's taken his wickets so far. He's always at you. And Amir Kaleem continues his great form. Bahrain innings really starting to struggle now. 61 for 7 in a world of bother. The new man to the crease, Imran Javed. Slower through the air that time by Amir Kaleem mixing up his pace well. Mark immediately. Just having a good chat with Azim Ul Haq, the Bahrain head coach, before the start of the first game. And he was saying one of the challenges his side faces is he feels like he's got 14 all rounders in the squad, finding his best variations of batsmen and bowlers is difficult. So, a man right on top. Not 
not the highest ranked side this week though. That belongs to the UAE, ranked 15th. Oman 17th in the world. So just to illustrate the gap between these two sides, or the gap there should be. Bahrain all the way down in the 50s. Time boys is the shape from the outfield from the Oman fielders. Well cut away, but Amir Kaleem, such a clever bowler. He knows where he needs his protection in the deep. And another good tight over. He's got two for 13. 13 overs gone. Bahrain 65 for seven. Let's take a look at the bowling figures so far. Such an experienced bowling lineup, this Oman side, with the exception of Wazim Ali, the youngster, 21 years of age. But Kali Mullet, he was hammered out of the attack. A six, two, four is in the single, 15 coming off his over. And they haven't gone back to him yet. Kawar Ali and Amir Kaleem are turning this game quite literally with their spinners. we're giving you there is from the rooftop of the Amarat Cricket Grounds here. Back behind the bowler's arm now, Karali. Wonder will we see a googly now? We will hit into the deep and Karali is going to have yet another T20i wicket. Never really had the elevation to clear the rope. Ahmed's stay at the crease is going to end with an unlucky 13. A lovely loop and drift. Pretty sure it was a googly from Kawarali. Even though it might have been picked, all he could do was pick out Cali Mullet down at long off. And the big, tall, six foot five fast bowler holds on to a simple catch. Bahrain slide even further now, 65 for eight. Oh man, keep getting it done. Doesn't matter the level, doesn't matter the opposition at the moment for Oman, they just keep winning. I'll quickly show you the points table on screen there. So that's the points table for Group A and Group B. Qatar and the UAE taking big wins already today and Oman could well be on their way to joining them. Run rate could come into it, unlikely to. The top two in each group go through to the semi finals. And then those semi finals are the really crucial games because whoever wins those two semi finals progress to the next stage in this Asia Cup qualifier. They'll go and join two sides from the Eastern region. And the tournament will be played in August out in Malaysia. Oh man, after a really hectic period with a lot of cricket coming into it bit of a break but not with a huge amount of Cricket World Cup League 2 games coming up either. Our next series in that will be after the T20 World Cup in December. They are going to Australia. Ooh, how pleasing is that? Their second T20 World Cup appearance after their maiden one where they infamously beat Ireland in Dharamsala. Draw to the Irish fans. Bowled him again. Karali lofts his two arms into the sky. He's got another wicket. He's delighted. He's got four for the final ball of his spell. Like every good leg spinner does, goes for the googly to try and clean the batsman up. But I think he might have ended up bowling him around his legs. Sataya. Rafferton on his T20i debut, completely bewildered by the googly, and he's bowled him around his leg. Yeah, and that is 
the ninth wicket to fall. kawarali has got four for brilliant bowling. He's got to remember the gap between the sides here. Oman, arguably the foremost associate in the world at the moment with the way they're playing. They might be ranked 17th in the world. They're probably more like 10th, 11th or 12th on paper, really. Big task for Bahrain, ranked all the way down in the 50s. Number 11 to the crease, the big fast bowler. That's Abdul Malik. He's at the non striker's end, of course. In fact, sorry, Abdul Malik, the left arm spinner, in at number 11. He's the big fast bowler on strike there. Imran Javid. Test for Bahrain against the home side. It looks like a test that they're going to be coming up short in at the moment. It's going to come around the wicket to the left hander. Really impressive so far. Well, Amir Kaleem has worked so effectively in tandem with Karali, both spinning the ball away from the right handers, but very different bowlers. Left arm orthodox of Amir Kaleem. You can see he's just licking his lips at trying to find another wicket. If he can find another wicket himself and Karali will have shared seven between them. The introduction of spin has completely changed this game. side this time going to be some runs and it's going to be four of them because it beats the sprawling dive of Bilal Khan and the number 11 with a lovely clip off his legs gets away with a boundary four not the ending to the spell that Amir Kaleem wanted but he'll finish with two for 18 really impressive spell from the 38 year old there he is, big smile on his face. Super stuff from him. Amir Kaleem so effective. We're going to see Bilal Khan now back into the attack. You can see in the games that we've covered for Amir Kaleem here on Crick Clubs, 11 wickets in just five games. Really good numbers for him. But Bilal Khan, it's going to be. Big left arm seam. He's going to come around the wicket as he often does in his comeback spells later in the innings. Tries to hoop the ball back into the right-handers. Can often hit the block hole with great ease and great comfort. Such an effective operator at not just the associate level, but Al Khan. We saw him win the ESPN Crick Info Associate Bowler Performance of the Year after that spell in the T20 World Cup qualifier. Really is a maestro with the ball in hand, but well dug out by Imran Javid. And and Javid perhaps making a case to get himself up the order tomorrow. Remember, we've got five back-to-back -back game days here, bringing you every single ball live from the Asian Cricket Council Western Region. Asia Cup T20 qualifier. That's the Bahrain card. Not much joy for them at the moment. 73 for nine, but who knows? A last wicket partnership. Maybe scrape up towards 100. Should put them something in the mix give them something to work with for their bowlers. It's worked into the leg side. It's going to be plenty of time for two, but they're not going to take it. And I think Imran Javid deciding that he's the senior partner now and he wants 
more of the strike if he can get it. Wind blowing our equipment everywhere in the background. You can perhaps see on some of our camera scenes, it's very windy indeed here at the moment. Toss from Bilal Khan looking for the Yorker. from Bilal Khan but surely going over the top still plenty of time for Bahrain here Bouncer, and that's hit him square in the head. Nasty moment, that's surprise. Short ball from Bilal Khan. And we're gonna see a break in play here because he's ducked right into that. Good to see them come and check on him. And we should see the physio onto the pitch here, really. That was a nasty moment. He ducked right into that. Imran Javid, and with the mandatory concussion protocols, we should see some Support come out to him. Well, Al Khan surprised many a better batsman than Imran Javid with his short ball, and that was really nasty. Let's take a look at the replay here. It was short and sharp and furious from Bilal Khan. And as we saw in Kathmandu, he often surprises the batsman with that short ball. And you can see Imran Javid just went nowhere, straight into the side of his head. Back live now, and Imran Javid's been passed to continue. Good to see hit down the ground for a single. He'll be happy to get off strike. Quick stuff from that, that from Bilal Khan. And we'll close out the 16th over. Bahrain moved to 75 for nine. Back to Cali Muller, who had the rather remarkable figures of going over none for 15. He'll be given a chance to get a wicket into his column. Change of ends as well, Cali Mullet coming now from the pavilion end and just heaved down the ground rather agriculturally for a single. Seven of the eight sides in this western region coming from in and around the Gulf states, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Iran. Qatar, and of course the host Oman themselves. That one's hit into the offside and Bilal Khan has managed to cut off the boundary. Number 11 on his debut, Abdul Majid Malik showing he is no mug with the bat whatsoever. And further reinforcing his point of his head coach Asim Ul Haq that Almost all of his squad are all-rounders, really. Nicely bowled by Cali Muller. Cali Muller hasn't played a huge amount of T20 cricket compared to ODI cricket, 50 over 
is really his bread and butter format where he comes in and it's that back of a length. He's only played six T20Is up to today and taken just three wickets. He's been expensive and batsmen have tended to get after him a little in the shortest format. Where his natural length just occasionally can be attacked and exploited. Gonna go for more runs, not exactly where the number 11 intended it, but Abdul Majid Malik has moved into double figures. Late joy here for Bahrain in their innings. Just gonna bring you the replay of that. Kelly Muller was looking for the Yorker this time, but he just got a two full. Trying to get it into the block hole, squirts off the outside edge. And away for four, back live with you now. Really good stuff this from the Bahrain, number 11. Looking very adept and growing in confidence. Adds another single to the total. Bahrain will just be thinking if they can bat out these overs, get up towards 100, maybe even 110. With this last wicket partnership really adding late momentum might just be in with a chance. You can argue a man's strength, definitely their bowling, particularly with Zishan Maksud and Matthew Bilyas both missing today. Matthew Bilyas will miss the whole tournament. We should see Zishan Maksud later in the tournament on his return from mourning two family bereavements, unfortunately, in Pakistan. ball this time from Cali Muller. Well picked and well played. Eight runs coming from the over. Cali Muller's poor day continues. Two overs number 23 he's got. At the end of 17 it's 83 for nine. Let's take a look at this Bahrain inning so far. You can see that the two spikes, the two most expensive overs of the innings have both come from Cali Muller. 15 coming off the second over. Eight runs coming off the 17th. But look at all those wickets falling in the middle, all falling to the spin of Amir Kaleem and Kawar Ali. The worm chart is the worm weasels away, and Bilal Khan's going to finish it up with a perfect Yorker. Just back live with you there. And Abdul Majid Malik's T20I. Career best of 12 will close out the Bahrain innings. And Bilal Khan has ended what was a promising last wicket partnership for the visitors. So a man of bold there rivals out for 83. It's a really good performance. So oh man bowlers, you can see the high fives on the screen. The Bahrain batsman trudge off. And there's the Oman side. Bahrain 83 all out. Not the day they would have envisaged batting first. And just a small home crowd now starts to rise to their side. So let's take a look at the batting card to start with. There it is, not much joy really for Bahrain. Shabazz Batter, the top scorer with 24. Unlucky 13 for Fayaz Ahmed. And late promise from Abdul Majid Malik. Good to see Imran Javid okay as well after being struck by that Bilal Khan bouncer. Really nasty incident that. But Bahrain bowled out 17 deliveries short of their full complement of 20 overs. That means there's the bowling figures. Kaur Ali, the star of the show. So often he is in the T20 internationals for Oman. We'll probably see him open the batting now as well. But Phil Al Khan, his left arm seam was simply too good for Bahrain. 3.1 overs, one maiden, three for eight. And the only sore note really was two overs, none for 23. Coming from the big man, Kali Muller. So what that means at the halfway stage of this, the third game 
of the Western Region Asia Cup T20 qualifier. Look at Bahrain have been bowled all out for 83. And Oman will need 84 to win and to start their tournament on their home soil in the best possible way. We'll be back with you in about 15 minutes time with every ball of the chase. Just get get through it, I guess.
Hello and you're very welcome back this afternoon here to the Al Emirat Cricket Grounds just outside Muscat and Oman for the home side's chase of Bahrain's total. Karali opening the batting with Jatinder Singh, the regular Oman opening partnership. And they have a small total to chase down here. Bahrain only able to manage 83 from their, well it wasn't even their full 20 overs. They were bowled out in the 18th over. And a good tight start for Bahrain with the ball. Imran Javid, the man, bowling left arm seam. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Kaur Ali really try to attack this Bahrain. Bowling attack. He likes to have a dash at the top of the order. Jatinder Singh, that was a man a bit shy of form. Hasn't been making the big scores he's been accustomed to. So he'll be just looking to get some time in the middle. So, at the end of the first over, just the three runs coming from it. It's three for none. So you can see the scores at the bottom of your screen there. Bahrain, 83 all out. We'll bring up the Oman scoring as soon as we can. But three runs coming from that first over. Eight sides are here this week, battling it out for two spots in the western region of the Asian Cricket Council. Asia Cup qualifier. And a nice little home crowd just nestling in to the beautiful setting here at the Al Emirate ground. It's going to be... Satya Vera Pitharan to open the bowling from the pavilion end for Bahrain. Right arm medium fast. And he beats Kaurali immediately outside the off stump. Kaurali looking for the expansive drive and he's beaten. One's just kept a bit low. First little bit of deviation of any kind from these immaculate conditions here in Muscat. Karali looked to go onto the back foot and punch it into the offside, but it just ran along the ground a little bit. Some promising early signs for Bahrain here. Rally works into the leg side mix up in the ring between the wickets. And even though it was almost straight to the man, the throw from wide of the stumps coming in from Shabazz Batter. The diving stop from the keeper, Anison Khan, who's none the too pleased with his fielder. In fact, sorry, the keeper, Imran Ali Butt. Really good over this from Sataya Vera Patharan. He's been all over both batsmen so far. Just finding a little bit of movement. Uh, 
That's a glorious shot. And that one's going to soar all the way into one of the tents for six. The first time he's straight in line to touch. And what a shot that is. Probably the shot of the second game that I've been calling so far. And we will get those scores updated at the bottom of your screen, so we'll just hide that for the moment. Bahrain making eight. Glorious shot, Carroll Alley following up his four wickets with the ball. He's making a real case for his man of the match here. The perfect straight drive, just slightly overpitched from Imran Javid. And met with the full face of the bat driven straight down the ground. Thuds into the side screen, four runs. Dropped, beautifully bowled, finds the outside edge of Carroll Alley. It was a tentative prod. And it's been put down. On his T20i debut, Imran Masood Butt has put down a difficult chance at first slip. It went quickly to him. He got both hands to it though, I think. Just bringing you the replay here. Really beautifully bowled, the perfect outside edge. And in fact, it wasn't a difficult chance, it was a sitter. It was straight to him. Should have been taken. Imran Masood, but it's popped in and out. Slightly awkward action of Imran Javid is causing problems. Slightly off the wrong foot, a little bit reminiscent of someone like Sohail Tanvir. And he produced an absolute beauty to find the outside edge. But Imran Masood, but couldn't hang on. for the quick single. Despite the direct hit, Carroll is going to get home. Bahrain certainly looking a little sprightlier with the ball in hand than they did with the bat. Struggled throughout their innings, particularly against the spin twins of Amir Kaleem and Carroll So effective for, oh man, those two spinners. Scores with you now. 15 for none in the third over. Should have been one wicket down though. Nicely driven by Jatinder Singh. Beats the sprawling dives. So there's going to be time to get back for at least a couple. It's going to be the captain, Anasim Khan, who has to do the work. Dominant stuff, as you'd expect from the home side, Oman here. Remember, they're chasing just 84 to win. They'll be looking to chase this down in a hurry. Good to see a slip in place, though, from Bahrain's captain, Amos Anison Khan. Big cheers at the second ground behind us. Give you a score update from there if I can. For this ball. So Kuwait, Saudi Arabia behind Ian. Rather remarkably, after being 50 inside six overs, Saudi Arabia bowled all eight for 113. So Kuwait will be looking to chase that down. Get their tournament off to a good start. And remember, as I've said, eight teams here playing out for two spots in the next stage. On the road to the Asia Cup 2020. Almost perfect cricketing conditions, you'd have to say. But at the moment,
moment. It's the home side on top. Bahrain are going to need something very special very quickly to start turning this game around. We've already seen Qatar score a dominant win this morning over the Maldives. Tinder Singh is going to take the aggressive route down the track in full control of that shot. Gets to the pitch of the ball and whips it powerfully into the leg side for four. Really nice, clean contact off the bat. It's all Oman, 22 for none, chasing down this total, chasing it down comfortably. Yeah, it's going to be back to back boundaries. Only half a hand backward point could get on it. Junaid Aziz on his T20i debut. Jatinder Singh just trying to find some of the form that's eluded him over recent times. Such a stylish and classy batsman at his best, Jatinder Singh. Just being a little bit shy of his runs by his own admission. And oh man, they're currently really up against it now. That one's going to not help the Bahrain situation because it's down the leg side and it's going to go for five wides. After such an impressive first over, he's just lost his radar a bit here. And that one is pushed down the leg side. And it's going to go all the way for five. That's a beauty. Really good comeback from Sataya Vera Patharan. Take a look at the replay of that. Well, such an impressive first five deliveries, and that time beats Jatinder Singh outside the off stump. it on his legs Jitinder Singh so meat and drink there for him worked into the deep going on does the fielding and you just noticeably can tell the energy the enthusiasm just knocked out of Bahrain right now down the leg side again but this time just clipping the pads of Kerali so it'll be a dot ball. Four overs gone, it's 32 for none. See the left arm seamer continue for Bahrain. Wind continues to get up and come across the ground from east to west. Jatinder Singh has really liked it there, this inning so far. Just going to be a single.
problems here for Bahrain because those two overs from the debutante Sataya have been expensive. Imran Javid's been impressive with his left arm seam, but we have to think we're going to see a change in bowling soon. Lovely shot from Karali. Pierces the infield. And with the immaculate facilities that we have here in Oman, that's going to be four. Karali getting into the act now with Jatinder Singh. Such a great asset to have for this Oman side. Karali bowls his leg breaks through the middle overs and then he goes up and opens the batting. Tries to smash it everywhere. looking to improve upon and their head coach Dilip Mendes the former Sri Lankan test cricketer is their fielding and their running between the wickets at times it's been the one area of their game that's really let them down five missed run outs America had in that first ODI of the Tri-Series in Kathmandu constant mix-ups between the wicket and their fielding at times was poor but their batting and bowling such high skill levels the Omanis continues to make up for it. But as they continue to go up the grades, they're going to need to improve upon that. Remember, they're playing a side ranked 40 places below them here today. They're big favourites and big favourites for a reason. Good Yorker, but slightly overpitched, and Jatinder Singh turns it into a half and turns it into a long full toss, really. Doesn't allow the ball to bounce, and he's really favoured the leg side in this innings. Remember, this is a man who's not been scoring with the fluency he's been used to at all. Scores of just 9, 23, 4 and 4 in that tri-series in Kathmandu. And for a player of Singh's quality. They're not the kind of returns that he's been used to. So another good over for Oman. They're going to be doing this chase in double quick time. 43 for none after 5 overs. We are going to see a change in bowling, as I thought we might. Safraz Ali is going to come into the attack, the opening batsman. We saw him take a real liking to Cali Muller early in the Bahrain innings, but I just wonder will we see some spin? Perhaps waiting for the power play to end, but the game could be gone. Jitinder Singh looks for the sweep off these medium pacers from Safraz Ali. Movement on show for the Bahrain bowlers so far. That one hit into the offside, nearly half a chance. Again, a mix up between the wickets.
nice hit down the ground. It's going to be a single. So man really starting to press their advantage home and only one result really looks possible. Nice full face of the bat greets that delivery from Kawarali. And yeah, and the running from out of the match is really only one choice for me at the moment, Kawarali. Feels like just yesterday we were commentating on a T20 international hat trick for him at this very venue. The Oman Pentangular Series back in October. Oman's rise up the world rankings continues along its merry way. Such an impressive side, and particularly with their batting and bowling. Make an argument their bowling probably the foremost in the associate world. Arm seam of Bilal Khan, the pace of Kali Muller, Fayaz Butt, Mohammed Nadim, and then their spinners. What about their spinners? Think about Zishan Maksud, the captain, Karali's leg breaks, and then Amir Kaleem's left arm spin as well. At that time, Safraz Ali straight down the leg side. start here for Safraz. He's kept it reasonably tight but looks to be a part-time seamer to me. Four runs coming from his first over. The end of the power play. Oh man, or 47 for none. We are going to see spin for the first time today. The end of the power play. I see the left arm spin. That's Abdul Maliku. Was in at number 11. Added 12 late runs with the bat. Hasn't started particularly well with the ball though. A bit of a half tracker. Hit out to the man in the deep. Imran Javadi does the fielding. Cut away, can't pierce the infield though. So, two one sided matches really to get. Group A going, you'd have to say. Can't quite prevent the stop. ups in the running between the wickets but it's not gonna affect and that's the 50 up for Oman coming up in the seventh over they're well on their way to taking the two points 
in this Group A of the Western Region, the Asian Cricket Council Asia Cup qualifier. It's all part of the road to the Asia Cup 2020. And of course, remember in this two year cycle of the Asia Cup, it's played in the T20 format. They team up the Asia Cup with the format that's being played at the highest level. And of course, it's the T20 World Cup this year. So they'll be going for that. So seven overs gone. Oh man, or 50 for none. Oh, 34 more runs to win for Oman to get off their campaign here in the perfect fashion. They'll be looking to do it in a hurry. And Jatinder Singh's return to form is going to be really pleasing. They get back for two. saying this is all part of the road to the Asia Cup T20 2020 and Oman continuing to do what they've been doing for the last three or four years and that's winning cricket matches so no matter the standard or the competition they just continue to win at the moment Working their way all the way through the World Cricket Leagues. Direct hit's going to be close. Karali just home. And really, any hope that Bahrain would have had went with that drop catch from Imran Masood, but it was a simple chance at first slip, a regulation chance really. went down. Jatinder Singh opens the face and works that one away for a single. But this old man side, they were so impressive in Kathmandu in conditions that even though they might be used to spinning wickets, Certainly testing for the visiting sides. To go and take four wins from their four matches there was a huge achievement and one that Dulip Mendes and his entire coaching staff so proud of. And rightly so. They were superb. Slower ball this time just worked into the leg side. Making this chase look very easy at the moment. Oh man. They are going to be closing this out with a win. Or opening this up with a win really. Closing out the day with a win. It's a pack schedule we have here in Muscat. Two games every day on both pitches. Eight teams. We'll play three group games each. Between Group A and Group B. With the winning side playing off against the second place side from the other group in the semi-finals and then it's all down to those semi-finals because the winner of those semi-finals will progress and take one of the two qualification spots so you could win your group win three from three and if you lose the semi-final you're gone hit powerfully into the offside but straight to the man so from what we've seen so far, Qatar and Oman certainly the sides to beat in this group. You'd have to think it's going to be a struggle for Bahrain or the Maldives to challenge them, but in the other group, it's going to be much more nip and tuck. UAE will be the fancied side, no doubt, but depending upon today's result between Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, 
that could end up deciding the second spot. And then Iran, of course, early in their international cricketing career, their T20I debut today. First ever match, historic day, the 23rd of February. Big appeal. Given. That's the first wicket. Some joy for Bahrain. And you can't help but say that Abdul Majid Malik has deserved that. Trapped Jatinder Singh LBW. He was looking for the paddle sweep. Not too sure why he needed to do that. He would have liked a little bit of red ink and a not out. But Abdul Majid Malik has produced a bit of magic. He's just got that one to straighten. And for my money, that's a very fair decision. Hit him probably around off stump. Even though he had a good stride in Jatinder Singh. Surely going on to hit the stump. So a little bit of joy for Bahrain. Who won't go down to a 10 wicket defeat. As Iran did earlier today to the UAE. And Jatinder Singh will be disappointed to have given that one away for 35. And not out was there for the taking. Jatinder Singh falls 35 off 28 deliveries. Three fours and that glorious six into the leg side. see Mohammed Sanath to the crease in at number three. That's the Bahrain card from earlier on. Bowled all out for 83 and here's the Oman card so far. So we will see coming to the crease at number three now. Mohammed Sanath the left-hander. Beauty. Big appeal. Given not out just for a moment. Almost did two and two balls, Bahrain. Beautifully bowled. Drift, dip, flight. Try and bring you a replay of that. Just skidding on as well. Not a huge amount of turn on offer today. The pitches have played really true. As they often do here in Muscat. Back to back. But it was slower and beat him through the air and big appeal from the keeper maybe for just a fraction of a moment the batsman might have just dragged his leg out back live now Track Carrelli, good use of the feet. We'll just get a single. Carrelli, definitely the junior partner in this partnership. It's going to end the first successful over for Bahrain. Abdul Majid Malik's got one for nine, or one for seven. And after nine overs, Oman are 61 for one. down the ground it's going to be runs and it's going to be four of them poor effort from long off perhaps carrying a little bit of a niggle Safraz Ali couldn't get around and the new bowler Imran Masood Butt is greeted with a smashed four down the ground
Yeah, so what a day it's been for Cavarelli. Four wickets earlier, followed up with this spectacular knock. He's blazing the ball to all parts of the ground. Hearing cheers behind us at the ground. Second of the two pitches here at the academy, the Oman Cricket Academy, as we're at here. I'm just going to try and get you a score update from across the way because Kuwait, perhaps in a bit of an upset, look like they're on their way to victory over the higher ranked Saudi Arabia. Karali of blood to the head yeah Kuwait 71 for one chasing down the Saudi Arabia total of 113 so a turn up for the books in group B Saudi's gonna have to bounce back got that big Saudi Arabia versus Iran clash later in the week one I'm looking forward to that one cut away backward a point and Kaur Ali is determined to Get this game finished in a hurry. Oh man, look dead set. To take the win. They're gonna be such a difficult side to beat here on their home turf. But remember, all it takes is one slip up in that semi-final. Big swing and a miss again from Carrelli. I said he wants to finish it in a hurry. He really does. 10 overs gone, it's the halfway stage of the chase. Oh man, they're 69 for one. Kept a bit low. Good to see Bahrain not afraid to attack still. Captain in there at short catching position. There's 14 more needed to win now. Offside, Carroll Ali really does want to close this innings off and perhaps the message has come out to try and get the bit of a net run rate boost on the off chance it's needed. It's a nice drive through the offside for four. Beautiful batsman to watch when he's flowing, Carroll Ali. see a nice little interesting conclusion to the match here because Abdul Majid Malik has bowled really beautifully not been afraid to flight the ball with his left arm spin the only disappointment for me from Bahrain's point of view is why have we not seen Junaid Aziz leg spinning all around her I was told that he was the one to watch I had a look at him in the warm up he looked like he turned the ball nicely you're defending a low score get your leg spinner on Give them the backing to take the wickets that you need. You can see the most effective bowler in Bahrain's inning so far has been a spinner. But we've only seen the three overs a spin. Using choices from the Bahrain captain Anasim Khan. As Karali's going to keep the strike. 11 overs gone. 10 runs to win. Oh man, 74 for one.
going to have a change in bowling. And we will see that leg spinner. Junaid Aziz. I just wonder why on his T20i debut he's been brought into the game with just 10 runs to win. You have to question that. Can't inspire confidence in the leggy, but here he is now, ball in hand. He does have a chance. It's just nine runs to win, in fact. And here we go. His first ball in international cricket, a moment he'll never forget. And he starts with a beauty. Nicely landed, good pace, a nice action. Just what you want to see from your leg spinner. Why is he only coming on now? And a bit of turn on offer as we saw with him in the warm up. Carali just works that one into the leg side. A little bit shorter this time, but some purchase from the wicket. I was talking with the groundsman earlier on and got four wickets specially laid out and marked out for this week so just one of the pitches will have to be used for two days but for three of the games three of the days the three group games we have double headers back-to-back -back games at 9 30 a.m. and 1 30 p.m. But for the semi-finals which will both take place at 9 30 a.m. on the same day take place at the same time so there'll be just one game on the Wednesday and one game on the Friday which is the, the grand final Let's see who takes the Western Region crown fairly good stuff this from Junaid Aziz to start with remember Kara Ali was the star of the show with the ball for Oman Taking a magnificent four wicket haul. Gotta get your leggy into the game in T20 cricket, modern T20 cricket, the way the game has gone. Pulled away and in the air, and so nearly a maiden T20 I wicket for Junaid Aziz. Don't think the mid wicket fielder could even get a hand in it in the end. Short, but again there was turn and offer so the pull shot wasn't in control it's enough but the mid wicket fielder couldn't even get a hand on and he was grasping a thin air really beautiful bowling Really good stuff this from Junaid Aziz. The great thing about tournaments like this, this Asian Cricket Council tournament, is the development opportunities that it gives to players. bold again heaved into the deep across the line by Mohamed Sanuth really lovely stuff from the young leg spinner no wickets for him but just four singles from the over good start for him in international cricket it's 80 for one spin continues to contain and Oman are not finishing this game as quickly as they'd have hoped it probably won't matter net run rate highly unlikely to come into play unless we bowler having to do He 
just lets out a yelp of frustration, disappointed with himself. Just two more runs needed to win, but he hasn't been able to finish the game as quickly as he'd have liked. And at this stage, I think he's decided to just take the red ink, get the knot out, and make sure to get his side over the line, which is exactly what he'll do. The scores are tied. Just one run to win now for Oman. Big appeal and given. So late joy for Bahrain and deservedly for what's been a really good spell of bowling from Abdul Majid Malik. He's got his second wicket, Bahrain of their second. So there was good loop and flight and drift from Abdul. Ajid Malik looked for the sweep shot, finds the outside edge through to the keeper. And he takes a good catch. And it's not going to be a nine wicket win. for oh man is young Wazim Ali I think he's been sent in up the order to try and give him a chance to get his first T20i runs just his second game the 21 year old he might not do that though because he's going to be at the non-strikers end we've scored that as a five ball over but I think there was six deliveries in it and at the end of 13 overs it's 83 for two So one to win here. The shadows lengthen across the ground. The breeze comes beautifully with it. And Karali has nearly chipped it straight to backward point. How you'd love to see the young man on debut, Junaid Aziz, get a maiden T20i wicket. He's been brought into the game far too late for me. Bowled really nicely. But that's going to be it because Long On is out on the rope. And that single from Karali is going to be all she wrote. May as well not have a man of the match competition because that's going to Karali. I'm calling it now. Four wickets and 38 not out from the all rounder, the star man. Remember, this is an old man side who are missing both their captains, Ishan Maksud, who's back in, back in Pakistan mourning the loss of both his grandfather and his grandmother. Once again, our best wishes with Zishan. But Zishan will be back, if not today, certainly tomorrow or the day after, for the conclusion, the latter stages, the crucial stages of this Western region, Asia Cricket Council qualifier. But missing both Zishan Maksud and Aki Bilyas, it hasn't mattered because Oman have won by eight wickets. And they've done it with nearly seven overs to spare, thanks to an outstanding performance from Kawarali. And both Oman and Qatar, the two favorites in this group, have got off to a flying start. Maldives and Bahrain might be playing out for third place, you'd have to think really in this group. That's how dominant, just keep on going with it. Take the win by eight wickets. 
warm handshakes between the two sides. Jasinder Singh there, the second highest score. He made 35 with the bat. You see Amir Kaleem on your screen as well. Big Cali Muller, wasn't his day. Pulled the two most expensive overs of the entire match. But he'll be back again. And warm applause from the balcony as well. Where some of the Oman supporters have taken up their positions from for the day. So let's take a look at the cards. Starting with the Oman batting card. I'll bring you that in a second, but just to confirm that Kuwait have taken the win over on the other pitch. Chase down Saudi Arabia's total inside 11 overs. Real turn up for the books over there. Well, certainly Barney and I thought that that was going to be a tight match, but it wasn't. Kuwait have hammered Saudi Arabia. And here we go. Oh man, they've taken a big win as well, to be honest. Karali, 38 not out off 44 balls. Couldn't quite find the rhythm that Jatinder Singh had. 35 off 27. And the two wickets to fall, both going to the left arm spin. of Abdul Majid Malik. He's the only one to get any joy in the wickets column for Bahrain. Two for 15, sorry, two for 16 for him. Junaid Aziz, the only other spinner used. No wickets on his debut for the leg spinner. But the seamers really struggled. Imran Javid, Sataya, Vera Pitharan, Safraz Ali, and Imran Masood, but no wickets for them. The two wickets to fall, falling on 59 and 83. So before we let you go, let's take a look at the points tables. Certainly our one's gonna be updated. We might have to wait for the result to filter in. It's just finished literally on the other pitch, but I can confirm to you that Kuwait have beaten Saudi Arabia. So what that means is that the winners today, Qatar, they're top of the Group A table, a much better run rate than Oman. I don't think that's going to matter. You can see that getting ready for the presentation in the background will bring you news of that. No doubt that's going to be Kaur Ali. But Qatar, top of the table. Oman, equal with them on points at least. Bahrain and the Maldives, two heavy defeats. And also taking heavy defeats today, Iran and rather surprisingly Saudi Arabia. So Qatar, Oman, UAE and Kuwait, they're the four in the box seats. At the end of day one, and just before we let you go, we'll bring you the match summary. Oman winning by eight wickets. The home side getting off to almost the perfect start. Really impressive stuff from them. We'll leave you with the scenes on your screen of what I am certain will be Kaur Ali accepting his Man of the Match award. As the Oman side gather. But for now, for me, Andrew Leonard, all the Crick Club's team bringing you these pictures live from here in Muscat. It's the end of day one of the Asian Cricket Council Western Region T20 qualifier. We'll be back with you with every ball of game two, or day two, where we'll have four matches. I'll be with you here on the main pitch, bringing you all the pictures. And we look forward to bringing you every ball of that tomorrow live on YouTube on Asian Cricket Council. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.
Rabbi? Hello? Hello? Hello?